Okay. Thanks everybody for joining me. And, and uh, after our, our friction circle plot uh, discussion the other day, the other, the other day with the webinar, uh, a, a question came up with, with trying to match up with Matt's data and, and, and thanks Matt for being here. The, um, the, uh, Enabling of multiple views. Matt showed that in as, as part a number of his slides that he talked about in his in his webinar presentation. And when you try to match up with what that webinar was showing, it, you're you're going to struggle if you've left the software in the in the standard configuration. And one of the things that everybody is is kind of running into is you've got your standard way of looking at the data. Maybe a, you've got a measures graph, and you've got a uh, maybe your GPS map is here, maybe it's not, but when you go to open up an XY plot and, and do the friction circle, let's say, if I open up the friction circle, it kind of opens up here since I've got my minimize where I can float the windows around. You first open it up and I'm gonna resize this just so everybody can see it a little bit better. When I go to the measures graph, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resize that to the, just the upper part and grab this, this XY plot and, and put it down in the lower third or two thirds maybe, okay. When you first open up an XY plot, we have no idea what channels are, are turned on when you first do it, right? It's, it opens up wherever it was closed last. So right now we're seeing a, a, an XY plot that has whatever channel we have over here in the, in the measures and laps toolbar, which, which drives the Y axis on the left end edge. And so right now we're looking at speed as, as the, the uh, XY plot and across the bottom happens to be, and it's, very often is this, it's the d data logger temperature. So I've got a, a, a Fahrenheit down here and, and since I know that's where it opens up, that's where it typically goes. So the first thing we would want to do is we wanna change these channels to, to make a friction circle real quick. I'm not gonna use this as a as part of this video, but in order to change the one across the bottom, the X axis, as Matt mentioned, you go to settings. And in this case, we want our GPS laterals and we want dots. I like the smaller dots. And uh, so we're, we select the lateral G's for our X axis, says right up here, horizontal axis channel, lateral G's, dots, and apply an exit. So now we're getting whatever the speed was at across the uh, speed, because it's the channel we've got turned on up here. And we're getting the uh, versus lateral G's. Mm -hmm. So then what uh, many of you have done is you, go, you come right in and you turn on your longitudinal G's, because that's what we wanted on our Y axis. Y to the sky is the way I always remember which, uh, which axis is which. And we turn it on and now we've, we're getting more channels added. And, and, a, and then let's turn on the, maybe to turn on the scaling so we can see the, the longitudinal Gs. What, what a number of people were finding is they, maybe they had a, a 45 degree line, right? That's happening always whenever you open up a channel that you have across the bottom. So you've got one on the X axis and you've added the same channel on the Y axis. Of course, it's gonna be a, a diagonal line because it's the same exact data on two different axes. So uh, I'm gonna turn that one off. Some of you were seeing that in speed in some other places. So so I uh, just wanted to show you, if you ever see a 45 degree angle, it's because you've used the same channel that you've used across the bottom. So, so let's turn that one off. And then the other problem people were running into and, and the reason why we have to use multiple views is is a, it's a factor that we call measures graph is boss. So this is the measures graph, right? And, and no matter what I do with this measures graph, if I zoom in, you'll see the, the amount of dots in the XY plot or any other function in, in Ray Studio, including the GPS over here on the, on the left, it only shows the dots that are visible in the measures graph. That, that holds true for your zoom in, zoom out, and which channels you add to the measures graph. That's why we see, if I turn off prolap color, that's why you see the green speed trace up here and there's a green XY plot down here below. And there's also a yellow XY plot with the GPS longitudinal in both windows. If I turn off the longitudinal, I lose what I'm trying to build with a, with a friction circle. Okay. So the way that you get around that is, is the ability to have a measures graph box and an XY plot or multiple XY plots, if, if that's what you're after. And the, and, the way we do that with the software is with, with the multiple views. So if I come up here under file and set user profile preferences and windows is where it's at. So that's where the choice is. So if I click on that, you have this dialog box shows up and it has the, the top box says enable multiple views. And you can open up multiple views of any different function. It's giving you, a, a, you know, some examples there. So I'm gonna turn that on. And what you're going to notice is, is 
basically not a whole lot changed. It kind of swelled up and did some things on the, on the graphic side of it, but we're still basically seeing the same thing. So I'm gonna exit out of that. And then let's talk about the differences and what we now can do. One of the things that Matt had done and, and I typically do, and I use multiple views as well, is maybe you want to name the, the measures graph. Right now it says measures graph parentheses one. And that's a hint to you that you are actually in multiple views. Is it's, it's gonna start to number them. If I were to open up a second one, it'd be measures graph mm -hmm. parent two, right? That's, that's your hint that you're in multiple views. That's the only way you, you'll actually see the, the big difference, really. The, um, and you can rename that. So if I come down here to the tab down below and I want to name this, you know, the speed trace, as Matt did in his demonstration, if I come down to this and I right click right on the tab, I have rename window. And, and I can just type in speed, speed trace, whatever, what, any, any name that you would even like to call it, right? So as soon as I click on OK, I now have a speed trace named up here, it's, and that becomes valuable when you have multiples, right? And, and instead of just having a one, two, three, what's that one for? What's that one attached to? So uh, rename them if you wish. And now I've got this GPS, the, the speed trace and XY plot one, XY plot one being tucked in here behind. Let's go ahead and resize that back like we had it before. I'm gonna take that up to the top. I'm gonna resize this one down into the corner. And that right here. Okay, so it still kind of looks the same. This is where it's just a little bit tricky for what uh, for what we're trying to do now. And this is a, there's no good documentation. So this, and it's always a stumbling spot when you get into this, the first XY plot you open or the first horsepower graph or the first channel, anything you do, the first one you open is attached to that measures graph, okay? Make sure you remember that. So right now, if I still come in here and I try to turn off my, my longitudinal, it still does it, okay? So the, the workaround or the, the way that you should be using this is this first XY plot, just minimize it down, even close it, whatever you want to do, and come right back up and open up another XY plot. Now it's not going to be attached to that measures graph. That's where a lot of you are running into the problem. You, most of you got to this spot right here and, uh, and you had it in measures in, you know, in, uh, in your multiple views, but it was still being attached to this speed trace. So what you wanna do is just open up another one. Here's the, here's the interesting part with this box. It's trying to even force you to maybe close that one. What you want to do is open up another one, click on the add new window, and maybe right, you can either do it here or you can do it later. I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, is maybe do it right here. And I can create a new one called, you know, friction circle. I'm just gonna name it with it right now. We could name it later if we wanted to circle and I'm going to click on okay. Now it just opened up another friction, another XY plot. You can see the one down here below is still open, but I've got this new one I've named friction circle. So let's plant it down here in the, into our window right about there. And what you'll notice now, and this is a, this is the, the next little bit that catches some people up is now it's real important for you to understand which one of these boxes is active. You notice the box on the left-hand edge, the measures and graphs is changing as I make, when I make the friction circle being the active one, you can kind of see it goes a little darker blue. Now I can pick whatever channels I want separate from when I'm on the speed trace, the measures graph that I've renamed speed trace. So I'm gonna click on friction circle. I'm gonna turn on my longitudinal G's to add that here. I'm gonna turn off the speed trace, okay? And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna add my lateral G's just like we did earlier, change it to dots small dots for me, apply and exit. And now all of a sudden I can come up here and I can add in RPM into my top graph and it does nothing to the bottom one, okay? I can zoom in and we can start to see that, that friction circle changing and, uh, and we, can, we can rescale things. We can do any number of things now and they're not related. So that's the, the real secret. If you wanted a second one, you simply come in and you hit XY plot again and let's add a third one and let in, and you can, I'm just going to leave it X, Y plot three for this one. <clears throat> and now I can grab this one and I can put it, you know, um, pop that right in here, resize that one to be only half size, resize this one to be half the other way. And we can do a, 
pick whatever channels you want or turn on the scaling for, I just, I clicked on it to make it active. And now I can take change and put, um, you know, speed versus RPM and change the, the little wrench and go into the options and change that to, to RPM across the bottom with dots and apply an exit. And now we've got basically a, a gear ratio chart, right? And it's all based on separate from, from the one that we have where we can keep our speed trace, our turn off our RPM, where we have that speed trace. So we know where we're at and the, and the little X is flying around down here inside. So it knows exactly where we're at. And if we wanted to zoom in on just one straight away, we could pull that over. And now I've got really basically one, a little bit of one uh, RPM must have been a, a shift in there. Yep. There's your shift. So everybody get a, a pretty good handle on how to, let me jack, back, back that back out, how we can build and, and create a, uh, different X, Y plots with a single measures graph. Anybody have any comments or questions on that? Roger, I'm not getting a cursor in my uh, friction circle. That one I think Matt, Matt tackled with somebody earlier. I, I haven't looked into that. I've seen it happen, but I haven't looked into it and tried to, to understand fully why. Could be the color. I can help too. there. Okay. If you go to the wrench in the X, Y plot, Turn on the flag. Oh, cursor tags. Yeah, it might be under none on the on one of yours. That that's a good that's a good place to start. Oops, I turned it on to none. Let me see what it does. Yeah, it's gone away on that one. That's uh that's probably the place. Okay, let me come back in, turn that back to small, and apply an exit, and the cursor just showed back up. That's a uh, yeah. I'm not sure who said that, but thank you very much. That was Tony. Thank you, Tony. Anybody, everybody else seeing what they needed to get out of that? Did I answer all of the questions that everybody was after? If well, you did. Roger, what, what, what seems to happen to me, I, I do everything, you know, you did. I have a measures graph up, graph up, up with mm -hmm. just speed. Mm -hmm. And then when I go and I hit the icon for the, uh, for the scatter chart, it comes in with speed. And so I go into that for the X axis, put in, um, the lateral G's, right? Mm -hmm. And I get those dots. But um, when I, when I, uh, so I have just lateral G on the X, Y, and I have speed up top. And with the X, Y highlighted, I go over to put the longitudinal, longitudinal, I can't say that, the long G's. Yep. Um, it shows up on both graphs. It's because you, what you need to do is open up that one is was your very first ever friction circle you opened with the measures graph yes. so it is it is still attached to that one so go to and just minimize that one out of the way do another friction circle and from then on they'll that first one is always attached with that first measures graph after that they will be independent so make sure you do a second one and a third one or whatever it happens to be uh, okay okay uh, okay i still have that first one down here by the way and if i open that one up Oops, ah, darn it. I think I just did that. No, there it is. Uh, I'm not sure how to, I, I, I closed it down. If I were to have opened it up, it would be attached to the, the first, first one that I did. So. Okay. okay Roger, sorry. two things. That actually is the first one because it has the one with it. Exactly, because um, I didn't rename it and I left the one. That's another important part because if you go up here too, thanks, Matt. If you come up here, you will begin to see how each one of these, you'll continue with that one. It is tied to that first measures graph. And if you want to revert back, you can, um, you can come over here and click to rename window in here, or you can revert, reset the names back to whatever, one, two, three, four, if you've renamed and forget which one that's attached to. So good point. The other one, an extra little nugget for people here is um, the graph we have here with lateral G versus on the horizontal and um, speed on the Y, the vertical, is a great kind of uh, rough graph of downforce your car makes in corners. Uh -huh. It's another interesting use of an XY that you can jump into and say, the faster the car goes, is it um, making more G-force where it's uh, it actually becomes an, an inverted triangle upside down? Or is it straight sided where it makes a little bit of downforce or is it like a Christmas tree and it makes less? Perfect. Perfect. I found my X, Y plot one. So if I added speed or RPM now over here, since X, Y plot number one is still attached to this, that's the only one that got that added 
uh, trace uh, when I add it up top. Okay. So that for that one with the one, don't rename it, just minimize it down and list and start building more XY plots after that and you will not have them attached. Okay. 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 Any other questions before we, uh, before we close this one down? Everybody How get it? I add the Y um, units and the cross hatches. So I see them across. Okay. Let, let's say like on this XY plot number three I've got here, I haven't renamed it right for RPM. When you, when you click on that one, again, make sure it's the active window. Mm -hmm. And then you have the little checkbox over here that'll show up on the left-hand edge. And if, as soon as I do that, it adds the scaling. It'll oh. always have the scaling on the bottom, but it will not have the cross the, the, the horizontal lines until you click the little checkbox. Okay. Good question. But, and, and it'll fight you because sometimes you'll be, you'll have this one checked or you'll have this one up here checked and you try to add them and turn them on, but they're not there. Always got to make the active window the one you're actually working on when you use multiple views. Okay. Good. Thank you. Very good. Anybody else got anything before we call her a day? I think that's good. That's perfect, guys. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks to all of you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Matt, for coming back and, and, and joining us again. We'll, uh, we'll put this one up on YouTube so other folks can have, uh, have a chance to see it as well. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Stay hey, safe. Roger. Thanks. Stay safe. See you guys. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.